Hello friends, welcome to Commerce channel. Today we will discuss some MCQ questions on residential status which is very very important from your examination point of view. There will be one marks questions which is asked on this residential status and also uh, some questions will be arised in your competitive exams for net exams, JRF and also any admissions for higher education. So there will be MCQ questions particularly on incidence of tax, that is on tax liability. So to know the tax liability or the incidence of tax of any assessees, he, you should know some uh, rules or the theoretical explanation I already given in your last class you should be familiar of that theoretical points of the SSC or the rules given under Income Tax Act 1961 with respect to that you should also know some uh, rules given for the incidence of tax in respect of assessees to know which income earned by the SSC is taxable which income is not taxable under the resident case, not ordinary case and also in case of non-resident. So here is the table that gives you some clear idea uh, which income earned by the SSC you have to tax it on which cases. So see, I made it simplification for you to understand it very easily. So the first point is that income received in India. So in your uh, uh, sentence if you come across that income received in India if any income if the SSC receives in India then in such cases that income is taxable for all the three cases that is for the resident not ordinarily resident and non-resident and second thing is that if you come across these point that is income earned in India so if any income is earned by the SSC in the previous year in India so then also you have to tax it for all the three cases that is resident, not ordinary resident and non-resident. So the first is income received in India. So if you come across the point that received in India and second if you earn that income in India also it is taxable for all the three cases. Third thing is that income deemed to accrue or arise in India. So if any income of an SSC in the previous year if it is deemed to accrue or arise in India. So deemed to accrue means here the word deemed to accrue or arise means that the income has actually not accrued or arised in India but it is deemed to accrue or arise in India under the Income Tax Act of 1961. So in such situation also you are going to tax it for all the three cases. Next, if the business is controlled in India or if the assessee's profession is set up in India then in such situation you are going to tax it for the two cases that is for the resident and not ordinarily resident and for the non-resident it is not taxable. Next is that if you come across this sentence that is business is controlled outside India. So business is controlled outside India means here income is earned outside India income is received outside India and there will be another point they add that business is controlled outside India. So in such situation it is you have to tax it only for the resident that is for ordinarily resident then for not ordinarily resident and non-resident it is not at all taxable. And next thing is that if you come across the income like any income received accrued or arised outside in India in any earlier years but later it is remitted to India in the previous year. Or you can also take it as that any past untaxed income if it is brought to India in the previous year. So it is already told it is past untaxed income means here it is not at all taxable in any cases in any of the previous year. So these are some simplified rules that you must notice when you are going to tax on the assessor's income in the previous year that is going to be taxed on the assessment year. So on the base of this we will discuss some MCQ questions on this. The first is that let me see that agricultural income in India is taxable under. So here the options given is that resident, not ordinarily resident, non-resident, 
and last is the exempt. So here the correct answer is that exempt. So here you know that agricultural income you should know some uh, meaning about the agricultural income. Agricultural income means the income earned in India. It is totally exempted from tax according to section 10 subsection 2 1a. So here agricultural income the SSE has to fulfill certain conditions. The condition is that the land must be situated in India and second point is that the land must be used for agricultural purpose and third thing the SSE should have interest on that land. In such situation if any agricultural income is earned it is totally exempted from tax so the option is fourth one that is D. Second question, we will see second one that is Mr. X earned income in India received in Bangladesh rupees 5000 is taxable under the first option is resident, second is NOR, third is non-resident and fourth is the all the cases. So answer that I marked is all the cases. So I told in my rules if any income is earned in India. Just if you see that income is earned in India means wherever it is received that you go for the second uh, Thing. First, if it is received in India means it is taxable for the all the cases. So, the answer is D. Next question is Mr. X earned income from business in Pakistan but received in India. Rupees 10,000 is taxable under resident, not ordinarily non-resident in all the cases. So, the answer marked is here in all the cases. So, I told here see income earned from business in Pakistan. So, first point you had to see income is not in earned in India. Second, you see where it is received, whether it is received in India or not. If it is received in India, it is taxable. So, it is directly told received in India. So, you had to tax it for all the cases. The answer is D. Next is Mr. Ravi rendering service in Bangladesh and accrued income rupees 20,000 in Bangladesh is taxable in the first is resident, second not ordinary, third non-resident and fourth it is given is all the cases. So here you see the point whether the income is received in India. So the service is given, Bangladesh means the income earned is outside India. Second point, accrued income in Bangladesh. So the way the income is received, it is received outside India, earned outside India. When both the things happens outside India, you have to tax it only for the first case that is for ordinarily resident. Next is agricultural income earned and received in Canada rupees 10,000 is taxable. Option is A, resident, B, NOR, C, NR and fourth is all the cases. So I told agricultural income, if it is earned in India, it is totally exempted from tax. But the same agricultural income, if it is earned and received outside India, then you have to go into tax it only for the first case. It is fully taxable, but you have to tax it under the case of resident. First option is the answer. Next is income from business in Japan is taxable under, sorry, for rupees 4000 is taxable First is resident, second NOR, third NR and fourth is all the cases. So you see the income from business in Japan means it is earned outside India. Where it is received it is not mentioned so you have to make assumption it is received outside India only. So when it is received in both the cases outside India, earning receiving is happening outside India then you are going to tax it only for the first case that is for the resident. Next is income from business in Iran but business is controlled from India rupees 30,000 is taxable. The first is resident, second NOR, third NR and fourth is A and B is the answer they have given. So here you see where the business income is earned. Income from business in Iran it means the income earned is outside India and you see where the uh, income is earned outside India and second thing where the income is received. Income is received is also outside India but they are given that business is controlled from India. If business is controlled from India I told it is taxable for the two cases that is for resident and not ordinarily resident. So the answer is to be D. Sorry it is not marked here but the answer is D, A and B. Next is interest received from non-resident on loan for business carried on in India rupees 28,000 is taxable. A resident, B NOR, C NR and D all the cases. So interest received from non-resident business carried on in India. Business carried on in India means here the income is earned in India. 
income is earned in india means i told it is taxable for all the three cases next is income from house property earned in sri lanka and deposited in a bank there so here earning is outside india and you have to assume the receipt is also outside india but they are telling deposited in a bank there in a bank there means you don't make an assumption it is receiving in india so both the things are happening outside india earning and receiving so you are going to tax it for on the first case that is for resident next assessor bought past untaxed income in the previous year into india is taxable so here if the any i told any past untaxed income if it is bought to india in any previous year then it is not at all taxable in any of the cases so the answer is none next question is a company is said to be resident not ordinary non resident and anc i told company is said to be a only resident and not ordinary it cannot become nor in my earlier explanation so answer is a and c every year the residential status of an assc so here the answer is it may change so there is no any other thing it is not certainly changing it will not change so the answer lies in first one that is every year it may change and next is on the base of residential status the assc is divided into here three categories that is resident not ordinary and non resident so the classification is 3 it is the answer is b on the base of residential status the assc is divided into here again first it was asked in numbers now it is given like this so the answer is the first one resident not ordinary and non resident next is on the base of residential status the firm is said to be i told the firm and company only two classification is that resident and non resident indian so the answer is b next is hcf residential status is the status is given three status one is resident not ordinary and non resident next question is under income tax act person means individual hcf company local authority all of the above so here person the definition is given as per the section section 2 subsection 31 person means an individual hcf company local authority association of person body of individuals any other person all of them is called as a person for the income tax purpose so the answer is all of the above next is agricultural income tax act 1961 agricultural income means so here it is given the income from poultry farming dairy farming rent received from agricultural land so i told agricultural income is the income which is earned in india the land must be used for cultivation purpose the assessee should be the owner of the land and he should have some interest on that land and the land must be situated in india and at the same time if any rent is received from agricultural land then it is also treated as agricultural income next is assessee means who is an assessee a person by whom income tax or any other sum of money is payable to the government any person in respect of whom any proceedings under on him is taken for the purpose of assessing his income or the income of any other person under his name every person who is deemed to be an assessee every person who is deemed to be an assessee in default all is treated as a assessee under the income tax act so the answer is all the above next is resident means a person who is resident in india within the meaning of here it is given under section 6 as per section 6 the residential status of a person is determined next is the problem based on uh, question based on problems the year mr x was born and brought up in india went for further studies to uk on 1st march 2019 and came back to india on october 2019 so the residential status of mr x for the assessment year 2020 21 so the answers are ordinarily not ordinarily non resident and none so so the option is ordinarily resident so see here he is born and brought up in india went for further studies on 1st march 2019 and came back to india on october 2019 so you count for the previous year that is for 2019 20 from march to october means it is more than 200 10 days he was in india it means he fulfills the basic condition given under section 61 and he also fulfills both the additional condition means he was born and brought up in india means he also fulfills both the additional conditions that is 2 years out of 10 years and also 730 days in 7 years so you can say that he is a ordinarily resident 
Next question is that Mr. X is a citizen of India, left for Iraq on 19th April 2019 and could not return to India till the end of the financial year 2019-20. The residential status of an assessee for the assessment year 2020-21, the answer is uh, resident, not ordinary, non-resident and none. The option answer for this is that non-resident. Here you see that he is a citizen of India. He left for Iraq on 19th April 2019 and he could not return to India till the end of the financial year. Means in the previous year, the previous year commences from 1st April and it ends on 31st March every year. So, in the previous year, he was not at all in India. That is, he does not fulfill the basic condition that is 182 days and he does not fulfill any of the additional condition. So, automatically his residential status becomes non-resident. So, the answer is C. Next is, Mr. Y left for USA on 10th April 2019 after living in India for 22 years. He returned to India on 10th September 2019. The residential status for the assessment year 2020-21 is, the option is ordinary resident, not ordinary, non-resident, none. The option first, that is ordinary resident is the answer. So, here you can uh, check the answer. He lived in, in he, India for 22 years. 22 years means he satisfies both the additional conditions given under section 6, subsection 6a. He returns to India on 10 September 2019. Means you have to check the previous year. Previous year is 2019-20. It commences from 1st April and it ends on 31st March 2020. So you count from 10th September to 31st March 2020. What is the number of days? So if you count number of days, he satisfies the basic condition that is 182 days in the previous year. So, his residential status becomes ordinarily resident. So, these are some uh, MCQs I prepared on residential status. This is very very useful for all your competitive exams. I hope you watch this video and you like it. So, it will be very useful for your examination point of view. So, thank you. Bye-bye.